as the Mavs finished with the 10th best lottery odds. An important note as Dallas owing the New York Knicks a top 10 protected pick. Paging Kendrick Perkins. Perk, was it the right call for the Mavs to sit the players on Friday? You know what? No, it wasn't. I mean, what you traded for Kyrie Irving for, right? You gave up all those pieces, key pieces, I believe it was, in my opinion, some picks and everything to do what? Not give yourself the best chance. The one thing that the Mavs had control of was what, what was in front of them. They couldn't worry about what, what OKC was going to do or things to that nature. So when I look at the Mavs and I look at what they did for us, and I understand you know, the pick and the lottery pick and protecting that and all that, but it looked bad, horrible on their organization. And, and when I say that, it's because you don't have Luka and Kyrie to, to, to you added Kyrie with Luka to actually in, 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 enhance, enhance your squad to take them to another level. This is a team that represented the Western Conference Finals last year. And so you mean to tell me you have one game in front of you. You don't know what's going to happen with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Somebody could have knocked them off at the time. You still got to give yourself every chance to make the postseason or to get into the play-in tournament. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think it was a good look. Uh, that would be foolish. But I do think people are overreacting. The Dallas Mavericks are a mess. And we don't say that with any kind of... of dismissive we're not trying to you know we like Mark Cuban I know I got a lot of love for Nico Harrison as well yeah for sure but, but they're an absolute mess um as Woj pointed out yesterday and reminded the world the Dallas Mavericks could have re-signed Jalen Brunson at 56 million dollars you dropped the ball you didn't believe okay because you lost out on Jalen Brunson um you felt the need to make a deal to acquire Kyrie Irving when you were three games above 500 and a top five seed in the Western Conference. And ever since then, with Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic on the floor together, their record is like 5-11. and 11. And they're, not, they're one of the fifth worst teams in basketball. They have not been impressive at all. And so now you find yourself in a situation where you got to ask, okay, what is it that we're really going to do? Because we can't stop a cold. We can't defend anybody. Even though our offensive rating is elite, our defensive rating is porous. There's nothing that we can do. No, we're not going to probably in all likelihood be a part of the Victor Wimbiana sweepstakes, but at least we can make sure that the New York Knicks, who already got Jalen Brunson from us, doesn't end up getting our pick, which is top 10 protected. So they're thinking along those lines, and everybody was making so much noise about them forfeiting games where it prompts an NBA investigation. I have no doubt the Knicks probably called and complained. But my point is you had a whole bunch of teams, you know, that weren't trying to win. I can name them, but I don't feel like it this morning. Detroit, Indiana, just to name a few. But anyway, that's beside the point. At the end of the day, the ultimate indictment against the Dallas Mavericks, Kendrick Perkins, is that they didn't believe they had a chance. Even with Kyrie Irving on the squad and even with Luka Doncic, they didn't believe they were going to make any noise in these playoffs. They thought they were going to go home early, so they said, why waste our time? Now, let's get to Kyrie Irving. You know, <clears throat> I've been pretty nice. I've been pretty nice recently, you know. I made sure to remind everybody, it ain't Kyrie's fault. Kyrie showed up to Dallas and did what he was supposed to do. You know what you're going to get from him offensively. You know what you're going to get from right. him offensively. And that's exactly what happened. I ain't blaming the, I ain't pointing the finger at him. But Kendrick Perkins, he's in the news again because he's the only player on the Dallas Mavericks to skip the exit interviews with the organization, with the media. He's the only person. Now, he's been talking to the media, been giving very insightful answers and stuff like that, all of that stuff. But they made it a point, and they've written about this because they believe that's an indication that Kyrie Irving doesn't want to be there because why would you avoid that exit interview? So because of that, we find ourselves talking about him again. In the end, what it comes down to is the Dallas Mavericks did not believe they were going to do a damn thing this postseason. That's why they made the decision that they made. So we can lament the decision. I'm just focused on the reason why. The reason why is 
We oh. think they're not that good, and evidently they feel that way about themselves as well. Yeah, but, but, but Stephen A., you are a competitor. You are a hard worker. You know, like I know, at the end of the day, you're there to compete. I agree. And we know that they, they traded for, okay, they traded for Kyrie Irving mm-hmm. to compete. They wasn't out of it. At least give yourself a chance. Now, if it, if it don't happen, it don't happen. But you have a game in front of you that's another must win. You're not out of it. You could actually show up and win. You don't know right. what's going to happen. But again, let me let me go to your point about Kyrie Irving missing the X of me. So what? So what? Okay. So what? Who cares? You know why? Let me tell you why. And you know I'm pretty hard on Kyrie Irving, but this is why I don't have a problem with him missing the X of me. Because this is a negotiation type thing, right? I would leave the Dallas Mavericks wondering too. What is he thinking? What is he on? Does he have plans on staying? Because the way that the season ends, and you just talked about it, you can't point the finger at Kyrie Irving because he showed up and showed out in great fashion since he arrived in Dallas. So if I'm Kyrie Irving, guess what? I'm going to leave him thinking as well. And this is the one time well, that I actually could say, I don't give a damn if he mixed the ex of me. I think well, it's I a do. hell of a move by him. I disagree with you there. I disagree with you there. And again, this is not, I'm not trying to be critical about it. When I want to be critical of Kyrie Irving, you will know. I ain't hiding it from anybody. This ain't one of those situations. We know. This is just, this is just, this is just calling it like we see it. Kendrick Perkins, I get where you're coming from. But with the Lakers in all likelihood about to re-up D'Angelo Russell, you do have to wonder how many options does a Kyrie have? And with you. And one of the greatest players in the game today, a guy on Luka Doncic that finished second in the league in scoring at over 32 points per game. With you and Luka, y'all lost more than you won when they were winning more than they lost before you arrived. So we have to, we can't ignore that. We can't ignore that and say, well, you know what? When you follow all of that up with avoiding an exit interview, it don't matter. Well, to a lot of people in the NBA community, maybe not me, maybe not you, but you know the NBA well. A matter of fact, you're pretty tight with, at the very least, a couple of executives. At the very least, you're very, very tight. You know this backwards and forwards. Stuff like that matters. And it does influence the decisions that get made. When people look at you, they know you got the game. What they're wondering about is everything else that comes with it. And nobody wonders about everything else that comes with it about anybody else more than they wonder about it when it comes to Kyrie Irving. That's just a fact. You know that. And guess what? I do, but guess what, Stephen A? He's so talented that people are going to put up with it, regardless. And we we witnessed it time and time again. We just like I said, we just saw, we just witnessed them trade for Kyrie Irving. They knew the baggage that came with him. They knew how his mindset and how he operates outside. Yeah, but they also the thought they were going to win. Lines and, but they also thought they were going to win. I understand that. I, I understand that, they say. But what I'm saying is, if you trade for Kyrie Irving and watching him over the last three or four years, you know what's coming with him, right? He has shown the world. You know what you have to deal with if you're going to trade for him. You know you might have to deal with a situation that's coming like this. But yes. at the end of the day, my whole thing is, he's so elite. He's so skilled and he's so box office that somebody's going to take a chance on him. And my thing is, this is the only reason that I'm standing up for Kyrie Irving right now in this particular moment. It's because since he's arrived in Dallas, he's done his part. The Mavs didn't that. do their part. I agree with that. That's, I, I, that's the only reason I, I could stand up. He showed up and showed out, like right. you would say. He showed up right. to work. Listen. I said that last week. It is not Kyrie Irving's fault what has transpired in Dallas. A matter of fact, a week ago, you're talking to folks in Dallas. They said that Kyrie has done everything they've asked of him to do. This is not his fault what transpired. But having said that, the result was still the result. And then you got to take into consideration what happened in Brooklyn. I'm not talking long term over three years. I'm saying after all the brouhaha because of the tweet and the link and all of this other stuff that had him away, they came back 
They won mm -hmm. 18 to 20. They were balling. And because this organization wouldn't guarantee four years, this brother ended up and asked for a trade. So what I'm trying to say to you is they were winning basketball games. They were elevating themselves. KD right. was his teammate. They were about to make some noise in the Eastern Conference. They had won 18 to 20. They were busting everybody's you know what. And he said because of himself, he wants out. So when you talk about his talent and what people are looking at, what I'm saying is when it comes to him, they're looking at everything but his talent because they know they got that. They know that talent's going to be there. The question is, how much can you trust him and how much can you rely on him to put his talents on display on a night-in, night-out basis? That has been the question about Kyrie Irving, and since he departed Cleveland years ago, he has answered it in the negative. That's not throwing shade on him. That's just pointing out facts. Because when Bradley Beal is getting over $200 million and Zach Levine is getting over $200 million and all of these dudes are getting their bag and Kyrie Irving, with his greatness, has a problem with somebody making a commitment to him, why is that? It's because of the, uh, the stuff that we're talking about now, the exit interview. You know how they're going to look at it. They're going to look at it and they're going to blame it. And they're going to bring up all of this other stuff that's been going on all of these years just because he missed an exit interview. He doesn't understand that something that little will cost him money because they'll use it as an excuse to say, see, he's a problem. He's not thinking about what's costing him money. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.